Hello guys, welcome to my channel. This is the 60 second tutorial in this course and in this tutorial we are going to check out some string functions. Now we're going to have a look at three functions. The first one is strlen or the string length function and uh, the string length function allows you to determine the number of characters in the strings that you have in your program. The second function that we're going to have a look at is the strcpy or the string copy method and this function allows you to copy the contents of one string into another and the last function that we're going to check out in this tutorial is the strcat or the string concatenate function and that function allows you to append the contents of one string to another right so the first one that we're going to have a look at is the strlen method and uh, as you can see using code blocks i've uh, saved a file i've given it the name string functions part 1.c and uh, on line 1 in this file i have the std ioh header file on line 2 i have another fi header file and this one i would be needing because uh, the functions that i'm going to use in this program require this header file to be present in the program right so it's called string.h and uh, you include it in the same way as you include the std ioh header file right on line 3 I have declared the main function and currently within the main function I have just one executable statement and uh, the statement on line 5 declares a string and uh, it's it's actually a one dimensional array of characters and we know that we have to declare strings in this way right so the name of the array is str1 and I haven't specified the size of the array so the square brackets are empty and the data type of the array is obviously char or char and uh, the string currently holds have a nice day right and there are three dots after the last word day in the string so we're going to have a look at the strlen method now and uh, I'm going to display the number of characters in the string through the printf statement of course so I'll type in printf right and since the size is going to be uh, an integer we'll have to use the person d format specifier to display the value of it but before we do that let's uh, display a simple message like uh, the size of the string is and then i'll put in the person d format specifier after the second double quotation mark i'll type in s t r l e n and then within parentheses i'll just type in the name of my string which is str1 right I'll put in a semicolon at the end of the statement and uh, then I'll click on build and run and uh, in the output window we see that the size of the string is 18 right so the string holds 18 characters according to the str alien function let's count the number of characters now so the word have has four and then there's the alphabet a that makes the total five and then nice has four so that takes the total to nine and uh, then you've got day that's got three characters that takes a total to 12 and then you have three dots right so these are also characters and uh, the dot takes the uh, the dots take the total to what 15 and then you have uh, three space characters between uh, the words in the string so you know if you add all the characters and you get the total count as 18 right so this is one difference between the str alien method and the size of method that we had a look at in the previous tutorial when you use size of you get the total you know blocks of memory that the string or the array uh, has been allocated right so uh, when you use size of the compiler also considers the null character that is added at the end of your string as a terminating character whereas when you use the strlen method you know the null character is not considered a part of the string and you just get the number of characters in your string right so that's about the strlen function the next function that we're going to have a look at is the strcpy function and as i said before this function is going to take two arguments and uh, both are going to be of string type and uh, you know let's have a look at it and in order to understand the strcpy method i'll need another string in my program so i'll declare another array and i'll call this one str2 and uh, I won't specify the size of it but since we cannot declare empty arrays like this I'll initialize it this way right so within the pair of curly braces I won't mention anything but this string currently does not hold any information right it just has null character and um, you know it doesn't have anything else so now we're going to use the str cpy function and uh, the syntax of this function states that you have to first mention the destination string so since we want the contents of str1 to be copied to str2 str2 here is our destination string and the str1 is our source string right so i'll type in str2 first i'll put a comma and then i'll type in str1 
I'll put a semicolon at the end to terminate the statement and then I'll use printf with the percent %s format specifier to see the contents of str2 right so I'll put my semicolon at the end and uh, when I click on build and run I see that in the output window I get have a nice day right so this is also the str1 string so the contents of str1 have been copied to str2 and when we see the str2 string we actually see the str1 string right so that's about the strcpy method the next one that we're going to have a look at is the string concatenate function and i'll uh, get rid of these two statements here and uh, i'll modify the str2 string i'll change its value and uh, initialize it with the uh, and an amazing night right so on the next line I'll get in a printf function because we'll be needing that to see the result of the concatenation operation right and uh, within double quotes I'll put the percent %s format specifier after the second double quotation mark I'll type in strcat that's the name of the function and then within parentheses I'll type in the first string which is str1 and since we want the contents of str2 to be concatenated or appended to str1 I'll type in the str2 string name after the comma symbol right and I'll put in a semicolon to terminate the statement I'll save the file and when I click on build and run now I see that in the output window I get have a nice day and an amazing night right so you should always wish people good night when you wish them uh, a good day and I just don't understand why people are so particular about you know wishing people nice days but nobody really cares about the nights right so that's not a nice thing anyway um, Thank you so much for watching this tutorial and uh, I hope you guys had fun and in the next tutorial we're going to check out three more string functions and uh, please subscribe to my channel in case you haven't already and uh, I'm going to see you soon.